As we watched the insectoids start to accelerate towards the Republic fleet, Sire Father expanded the hollow wave projection so that it took up almost the entire wall of the den. He input his retired government credentials into the satellite and drone network and more projections popped up, showing multiple angles of the battle space. I watched as the Republic fleet held its ground, with its battleship formations blasting towards the sides and the frigates and destroyers assuming position in front of the fleet. The sensor network provided information as it listed and categorized the ship classes and functions, and I saw that the unknown ships that had just flashed out were now listed as null ships. I tapped the floating icon and read aloud as the information provided by the Republic fleet scrolled by. These null ships have no crews are controlled by battle AIs, and the hulls are infused with null space particles. They are powered by antimatter reactors and are listed as stealth battle cruisers. Sirefather grunted and looked at me. I told you, these humans are far more capable than the Commonwealth gave them credit for. I held my tongue, still not believing fully that the humans could win. I closed out the info screen and watched as the insectoids accelerated towards the Republic fleet. Closing the gap, the frigates started falling back, while the destroyer squadrons used their thrusters and started to head both above and below the plane of the ecliptic. The center of the Republic line seemed to explode in a starburst pattern as the heavy cruisers that anchored that section blasted out in a frenzy and fled. I knew it, we are dead, I thought to myself as I watched the humans abandon the center of their battle lines. I saw Birth Mother put her head in her hands and start crying while Sirefather just stood there with a stupid grin on his face. The insectoids burned their engines and adjusted their course slightly to take advantage of the now completely open center of the Republic fleet and I knew it was over right then and there. As the insectoid fleet headed towards the gap, I watched in confusion as the ships that were fleeing suddenly executed pinpoint flips with their positional thrusters, and they were now cruising backwards at 30,000 kilometers per second. All the bows of their ships pointed at the gap that the insectoids were headed towards. What is happening? I yelled out as Sirefather shushed me, and the fleeing Republic ships fired. The hollow wave screen flared brightly before it compensated, and I stared in stunned shock as the sheer volume of weapons fire that came from the Republic fleet smashed right into the gap now occupied by the insectoid fleet, and hundreds of cruisers protecting the front of the formation vanished in an instant. The drifting Republic ships fired again, and now I saw two hive ships explode and several others were damaged. The Republic frigates that had pulled back now surged forward intercepting the tremendous missile volley that was fired by the insectoid formation with particle beams and plasma turrets that lit up the battle space with terawatts of raw energy and swatted down thousands of missiles. The remaining missiles that survived the first layer of defense then found themselves hurtling towards a solid wall of millions of tungsten ball bearings as the frigates shot hundreds of canisters of grape shot per second. The grape shot shredded through the remains of the insectoid missile volley and the remaining ball bearings continued accelerating, smashing into the formation and tearing apart numerous cruisers. Meanwhile, the destroyer squadrons that had gone above and below the ecliptic were now in those positions relative to the oncoming insectoid formation. They opened fire with their respective ventral and dorsal plasma railgun turrets and hypervelocity 30mm Gatling guns as they strafed the formation, slicing through the upper and lower shell of cruisers like a buzzsaw. Hundreds of insectoid cruisers sloughed off the formation as they were ripped apart by plasma bolts and 30mm hypervelocity slugs that tore through them and peppered the hive ships inside the formation. The destroyers finished their strafing run and headed out to open space, leaving behind over 150 broken and exploding Republic hulls as the insectoid formation counterattacked and thousands of particle beams reached out and sliced through them. The insectoids fired another volley of thousands of missiles that chased after the destroyers. The screening frigates then leapt forward and activated their countermeasure suites and point defense systems, and destroyed or jammed a large percentage of the volley, though dozens more destroyers fell to the onslaught. Sirefather hung his head down and quietly prayed to the Maker to preserve their souls as we watched thousands of human lives being extinguished before our very eyes. I started crying in shame and asked for forgiveness for thinking they were cowards, as I watched them throw themselves into the battle with wild abandon.
Abruptly, hundreds of null space flashes appeared inside the fist formation itself, and the null ships appeared, rapidly firing triple shots of plasma bolts and slicing through the hive ship hulls with heavy particle beams. They were accelerating at speeds that seemed impossible, and the evasive maneuvers they employed easily broke the few target locks that found them, as the insectoid beams could not seem to lock onto the null particle hulls, and thousands of beams speared the battle space, hitting nothing. Working in groups of four, the null ships targeted specific hive ships with exquisite fire control, and as they passed one target, another group of four would come from another direction and hit the same area of the hive ship hulls, blasting open great rents that ejected bodies and frozen fluids. The null ships continued moving on through the formation, leaving an apocalyptic scene of destruction behind them as they flashed out, with a few of them finally being destroyed as they failed to enter null space. As soon as the null ships flashed out, thousands of starfighters entered the fray and hit the reeling formation with fury, firing penetrator missiles that dug deep into their targets before tearing out huge sections of the hulls with antimatter explosions. Sirefather yelled out and pumped his fists in solidarity with the starfighter pilots, as he himself was a planetary defense pilot before he went into government service. As we watched the hive ships being mobbed by the starfighters, we saw dozens of them blinking out every minute as they fell to the point defenses and continued pressing on despite the carnage. They were devastating the formation as hive ships started listing, racked with massive internal explosions while cruisers were being obliterated as the starfighters targeted their hull breaches with their turrets. The starfighters finished their assault and fled towards open space, having lost over a thousand fighters in their ferocious assault. The null ships returned, flashing out of null space already at full acceleration and ripped right through the bleeding formation. There seemed to have been a change in tactics by the insectoids as their weapons fire was now much more effective, and individual null ships started exploding under an onslaught of hundreds of beams that they could not evade. As they weaved through the formation wreaking havoc and finishing off wounded hive ships, Dozens more null ships were destroyed before they flashed back into null space. The insectoid formation then started to contract in size as it continued onward, leaving burning wreckage and exploding ships that stretched like a trail of fire behind it, marking its passage like a bleeding comet. Entire wings of Republic heavy cruisers took advantage of the insectoid's momentary repositioning and strafed the sides of the formation with heavy broadsides of 16-inch railguns and secondary plasma turrets, smashing through the cruiser screening force. Damaged insectoid cruisers fell out of formation, creating gaps that the heavy cruisers then fired plasma bolts and missiles through as they sailed past, damaging and destroying several more hive ships. The formation counterattacked with thousands of missiles and particle beams and destroyed 112 heavy cruisers and damaged dozens more before they got safely out of weapons range. Birth Mother loudly gasped, and I looked at the infographic that suddenly popped up on the side of the hollow wave screen as the number of Republic ships destroyed and damaged were rapidly revised, and the killed and wounded tally was already over 200,000 casualties and trending upwards. Birth Mother turned her head away from the rapidly rising numbers and buried her head into Sire Father's chest, crying and murmuring, All those poor people, when will it end? As Sire Father sat there with a grim expression and tear-filled eyes, his shaking hands tightly balled into fists. I felt myself racked with emotions and fled outside to the deck to stem the tide. I took shuddering gasps as I looked up into the sky grateful to see only blackness and stars unmarred by exploding ships and the drifting corpses of our protectors. I took a few deep breaths, calming myself, and then urinated into the forest canopy, relieving my poor bladder that had been screaming at me for over three hours since the start of the battle. I ran back inside to find only Sire Father sitting there. Where's Birth Mother? I asked. She has had enough. Her heart can't take any more death. Leave her be he replied, sounding like he was reaching the end of his own limit. I sat down quietly and watched as a heavily damaged Republic cruiser altered course and blasted towards a lagging hive ship and rammed right into it, sinking almost halfway into the hull. There was an eerie moment as the two ships silently spun together in a grisly dance, before the cruiser overloaded their core and blanked out of the hollow wave screen. 
It adjusted for the sudden burnout and there was nothing left of those two ships, while a hive ship and dozens of cruisers nearby were outright destroyed by the core breach. Then the battleship wings smashed through the formation, and the sheer violence of their passage seemed improbable considering how small the battleships and heavy cruisers were compared to the hive ships. As the decimated battleship wings completed their attack runs and headed towards the safety of open space, the null ships flashed back in and finished off any damaged hive ships that were still functional, and flashed back into null space with no losses. Now, the insectoid formation started contracting in size and rearranging the formation until it was a perfect sphere and accelerated towards the inner system while the Republic fleet was flashing in and out of null space trying to reorganize their dispersed formations and pursue. As the insectoid formation got near the fourth planet, I started getting scared as they seemed to be heading directly towards our planet, the second from our sun. A new countdown appeared in the corner of the screen, showing the time before the arrival of the formation at Eleania. The Republic fleet had left a carrier task force, two battleship wings, and several hundred frigates and destroyers to supplement the less than two dozen Eliani warships we had left in system as a last line of defense. A diagram popped up showing the main Republic fleet icons and their relative position to the advancing formation, clearly showing that they could not intercept them in time as their null space capacitors were not charged enough and their relative velocity was not enough to close the gap in time. That's not enough to stop them, I yelled out panicking. Sirefather just raised a hand, silencing me as he leaned closer to the hollow wave screen with a terrifyingly feral expression, and simply said, Wait. I felt the sudden urge to urinate again as the seconds ticked by, and the formation passed the fourth planet heading closer to Eliania. All of a sudden, there were thousands of pinpoint explosions all throughout the formation, and insectoid cruisers and hive ships started exploding and careening out of control and suffering massive decompressions. The sensor drone suddenly zoomed in, and we could see tiny objects seem to shimmer into existence and accelerate towards the remaining ships before latching on and then exploding. Now the formation was a mere shell, seeming to lose all control and break cohesion. Ships started drifting and colliding with each other as they lumbered deeper into the minefield, making no attempt to change course or even save themselves. Suddenly, the last two remaining hive ships and thirty-odd cruisers flashed into null space, and it was over. Sire Father and I sat in stunned silence, and he suddenly leapt up and screamed, Take that, you Kerleki Ishkatuk! I heard Birth Mother loudly gasp from the other room, and she came into the den and yelled, Nimto, language, as I turned my head and blushed in mortification at his words. He laughed at the admonishment from Birth Mother and grabbed me and hugged me tightly. Birth Mother came over and added her arms, and we all just quietly wept in relief, shaking and exhausted. A little while later, I was sitting in my chair and trying to keep my eyes open as we waited to hear official confirmation that the insectoid menace was over and that Eliania was finally safe when a Please stand by message appeared on the hollow wave screen. An image came up, showing a menacing bird of prey with its wings spread out, with one foot clutching some type of branch in its talons, while the other was clutching some type of pointed sticks or spears. The bird looked like it wanted to fly out of the screen and tear my face off. Underneath the vicious bird was a stylized banner with human words across it. Libertas oppressis mors oppressoribus which our translator rendered into galactic standard as freedom to the oppressed, death to the oppressors. A few seconds later, Admiral Thompson appeared on the screen, looking haggard and as if he aged ten solar cycles since he spoke to us just eight hours ago. Behind him on the bridge, we could see damaged consoles and ruptured conduits, and there were significantly less humans at their data screens than before. He gazed into the hollow camera and started to speak. The insectoid fleet has been eliminated and our long-ranged scouts report that there are no signs of insectoid ships within 100 light years. I hereby declare the Eliani system to be secure. We have won a great victory at a great cost. We will continue to remain here for the time being as we repair our battle damage and send out search and rescue craft to recover survivors and our honored dead from the void. He paused and his voice wavered slightly as he continued speaking. Any civilian ships that wish to help may do so. 
Your assistance would be greatly appreciated as time is of the essence to reach survivors before air runs out. Medical personnel are also needed as we have far more wounded than we have the capacity to care for now. Please coordinate any rescue efforts through your government, which is now setting up a link system portal to streamline the process and get you to where you are needed. He then took a deep breath and reached into a pocket on his chest and took out a folded square. He unfolded it and said, This was written by President Lopez and it is a message that I was to read to you if we emerged victorious and saved your world. He started reading. If Admiral Thompson is reading this letter, then that means we have achieved victory and saved you from extinction. I want you to know that no matter the cost in lives, ships, and treasure, the Republic will always be at your side until the bitter end. You once reached your hands out to us in friendship and goodwill, when we were a young species taking our first steps into the unknown. You helped us grow, learn, and most importantly of all, you were steadfast friends who accepted us for what we are and helped guide us. You have shown us that you are a good, decent people, and you have earned our trust, our loyalty, and our love. Any hand raised against you is raised against us, now and always. We will never forget your friendship and kindness, and now we are forever bonded in blood. You will never be alone again. The Admiral stopped reading, his eyes brimmed with tears, and carefully folded the paper back up and placed it into his chest pocket. He looked back into the hollow camera and simply stated, that is all for now, let's get to work, people. And then the transmission ended. All three of us were openly weeping and continued to do so for a long time afterwards.